All right, guys, it is after action with a fight. Go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Taylor Rochford, and I'm Ta sitting here. Taylor, this is the first time he's ever done an interview with anybody, first of all, so maybe a little bit nervous, give him a break, <laughs> right? Um, firearms classes, how many have you taken prior today? Well, first off, how old are you? I'm 17 years old. Okay, so you don't have to be a full grown ass man to be in this class, but it will make you one. Yes. Um, how many classes have you taken before this? I've taken two. Two, and what were they? I've taken um, cortisol carbine with uh, Kanai Academy, and then I took immediate medical action with tactical response. Kanai Academy as in like- Billy Birdzell. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I like Billy, he's a good dude. <laughs> he is yeah. a good dude. Yeah. Um, excellent, so wait, what was the second one? Uh, immediate medical action with these guys. Oh, okay. I need to still take that class. Um, I'm hoping to get a primer this weekend, but, but anyway, that's not related to this video. <laughs> so, Actual like live fire firearm like pistol like never done a never force on force class before ever ever. Right? You actually were late to fighting right or fighting pistol before yeah. this, weren't you? Yeah. Yes. So he totally screwed up. Yeah, I, I didn't even get to uh, fully take fighting pistol, so I it was like, hey, you get to take the fight before fighting pistol. Yeah, and we were literally like, oh, you're gonna understand why you do that. <laughs> you will not ask questions in the other classes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, first off, what did you think of the class? It was awesome. You, yeah. you need to take it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the best way to say <laughs> best it. Best way to say it. Most concise. Um, what would be a thing that you would, I mean, you don't carry every day because you're underage, right? Sure. But if, if there was a life skill that you learned in this class that you could take home with you right now, what would it be? Being aware. Being aware. Um, like as a teenager, I have a tendency to look at my phone a lot. Dude, and, I'm 30. And yeah, I look at my phone and all I the just time. constantly. And one thing that this has taught me is I need to be aware of my surroundings. Anything can happen in a blink of an eye, and you need to be aware. It's so fast and it's so vicious. The world it, sucks. The world sucks. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I tell you what, um, that is made quite apparent very, very quickly. very quickly. As soon as you walk in, you are bombarded with a bunch of stuff. Um, I had an opportunity to film some of your scenarios. Yes. They look, they look pretty good. So uh, <laughs> we'll chop out all the bad parts. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but the, uh, I think the major, major thing to look at is that this is a different type of class. Yes. Right. This is not your. This this no. class requires injection of your brain yes. into um, other people's perception yeah. of an of a scenario Absolutely. right because it's not just you no right no because when you're on the flat range right even if you're with an instructor right mm -hmm. it's basically just it's you basically just it's you. you and the gun and yep. an inanimate object it. right mm -hmm. and the target yep right and i suppose we can throw some bullets in there bullets too in there, yeah. right but when you do a force on force class the other person gets oh, to yeah. say and if there are 10 other people oh yeah right your world just got all jacked up right and and, and like a part of you knows that it's it's you know it's not real, but the overwhelming majority for some reason that adrenaline kicks in and you're like oh my gosh, that this is happening. Yeah. And if you, if you you know kind of change your mindset a little bit and really put yourself in that oh this is real, you're gonna get so much more out. You of class. and this is the kind of class to, to to clarify what he's saying. This is the kind of class that you have to put mental effort into. Absolutely. If you don't want to be here. You will get nothing out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to want to put yourself into the scenario. And if you immerse yourself in that scenario, um, talk to some of the other guys. They're coming back yep. shaken. Oh, yeah. Right? I was shaken after every scenario. Oh, yep. And there were, there were a couple of them, especially the ones where you're a little bit more vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, that um, I couldn't write. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you like, have to sit there for a minute and be like, yeah, let, let's come down a little bit. <laughs> How do you feel as far as like energy right now? Two days of force on force training. Exhausted and amped at the same time. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> like I am, I'm the same way. I yep. get to do this kind of stuff like, all the time and I'm ready for bed. <sighs> yes. Yes. So that's one thing that you don't really recognize. The scenarios themselves had no physical, no. Exer physically exerting at all uh, part of the thing. Like right. any, uh, an 80 year old woman can come in here and do all the scenarios. There's nothing crazy that you had to do, Not right? right? But I am so tired right now. So all I care now. about is getting to my hotel going and going to bed. bed yep. Right? Absolutely. So, uh, and that's something that you that you uh, that you get uh, acclimatized to, you get used to. Um, yeah. But still, it takes a toll. I, I, and that's I can only imagine 
what it's going to be like if you ever have to be put in that oh, situation for real. Absolutely. And you go, you, we've all, you'll get this in Fighting Pistol, mm -hmm. but there's a whole study mm -hmm. of the cycles of things that go through your brain right. when you uh, go through a, a real world scenario like this. And now you can, you will see when you take that class. Yeah where that fits into that cycle mm -hmm. and it'll make complete sense you'll be able to override those those instinctive things that you're going to experience absolutely um when the next time you take a force of force class and it but, will be soon yes <laughs> absolutely hey thank you very much thank you it was, so much it, it was excellent training with you awesome i hope to, training with you I, ha I hope to do it again here absolutely. in the near future so much appreciated thank you so much the fight everybody do take, it take it good stuff good stuff thanks man that was yeah. cool <laughs> That's the way the movie magic's made, man. That's this is so this is, cool. Because yeah. I've been watching your channel for shit years too. Oh, well, like, dude, I really appreciate that. You have no idea, like that, I mean, like that kind of stuff, like being being there and hanging in there, and and you know, I know that not everything that I no, do is is cool, like, right? Yeah. Um, introduce yourself to the camera. Hey, I'm Corey Sachs. Corey Sachs, uh, you were. I think I have a few shots of you. I don't. I'm not sure. If I probably shouldn't put them on the internet. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe just the cool parts, <laughs> yeah, right, right? Right, right, right. Um, so they ro they had like a rolling, you know, scenario thing where you know you, there was a line, people had to get into it, you know, and then like I would basically run through the scenarios and then come back and film people, and uh, I spent more time talking to you than I think anybody else uh, on the thing. So I kind of have an idea of like where your mind's going on uh -huh. on an interview like this. What did you think of the fight? Man, it was awesome. I've taken, uh, I can't count how many ta classes I've taken tactical response, but uh, this, I think, is the culmination of everything because um, it's just putting all that mindset, tactics, skill, and gear uh, to use and letting you see where you're at. I mean, I think it's kind of supposed to bust your ego a little bit so that you know and it helps you to understand that you're probably going to make wrong decisions and that you need to fix that. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, uh, there's an ego for uh, enlightenment mm -hmm. exchange that occurs in this class right. and it happens like immediately. Sure. Right? Yeah. Like, remember scenario one? Yeah. And you're just like, yep, well, never going to the store, never running out for a gallon of milk, like, right. without my firearm. For ever sure. again right yeah. yeah like there's a lot of that sort of stuff that happens is there one thing that you took away from the course that like that is like just gonna like change the way that you think about things and as far as your defensive your your warrior mindset that sort of thing um well i i am very good about always caring mm -hmm. um there are maybe some things at home that i can change um where i've gotten a little bit sloppy on that uh some of the scenarios maybe pointed that out too yeah yeah um and um uh, you know i just i need to probably think about different situations through my head so that i'm making the right decision because i definitely made a couple of wrong decisions during yeah. the fight do you use atms uh not usually no <laughs> <laughs> neither do i yeah atms are bad by the way yeah yeah <laughs> but um i would i would echo all those points i think that i think that that's exposed to just about everybody yeah. um i would say for me personally um i think that a lot of how i have things set up at home is probably okay but there are things that maybe I skimp on because I because when I go to the range I may not do things exactly the way that they've been laid out in fighting pistol right which if you are coming to the fight you should definitely take the fight you should probably also take fighting pistol because it sure. lays out a lot of other sure. stuff um, I found myself missing steps and by the end of the the whole shebang I, they were pretty much solid at that point in time but they were still the whole communicating with the authorities thing, like that's nerve wracking. Yeah, right. It's very. Even it's not real, and if you're in it, it's real. Then I right. mean, it's a, it's a it's a problem. It's very realistic. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know that it's a scenario, but man, the instructors do a great job of putting you in the moment and making that stress level go through the roof. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, the stress level, they actually make you fill out like a stress, like they make you fill out a debrief as you go through the course, you know, each scenario. And 
man, there were some of those scenarios that I'm like, I don't even know if I can quantify my stress right now. Right, and they all would ask you how much time it took to come down. And so I had to like wait and come back. And on one of them, I mean, it, it took me a long time to come back down. I'm writing my debrief and my hand's shaking, mm -hmm. right? You know, especially the ones that you were like a little bit more uh, disadvantaged on. Yeah. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah. So the fight at Tattoo Response, uh, probably one of the most badass courses I think available. If, I think if you could only take one class, if you can only afford to take one class, it should be this one. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, James will say, oh, take Fighting Pistol, you know. And I'm yeah. like, eh, take the fight. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, but a lot of people, he said that a lot of people don't. A very, very small percentage of people will take a force-on-force -force class, and that is a crime. 